it's a house. This is why knocking has always been flawed. And they just said he was being transported by ambulance to American Fork Hospital. And they couldn't tell me any more information. Well, it's time for another amazing story. And I have no idea what that story will be in my eternal quest to prove that everybody has a story. I realized it's been two years since I have knocked on a door to get a random story. So that's what I'm gonna do today in this beautiful neighborhood. And I'm gonna let the pen decide which house we knock on. So let's spin the pen. Kind of on the corner. Knuckles are not what they used to be. It's a church, but it's a house. I wouldn't uh, get too <laughs> up in the business. <laughs> There's no doorbell, but it's got a map. And then it says private drive. And then uh, it's got a mailbox that says Bigelow. It's a little bit chilly, but it's not bad. It's actually really nice. Probably looking out the window, calling the police about it. Yeah. Now. Don't trip on the chalk here. It's called tripping with Todd, and it really could be. These are solid doors. This is lovely. Brought a jacket. Smart of me not to wear it. Yeah, it's just right on the border, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah, down here on the border, you wouldn't think it'd be so cold. Well, even if nobody's home, there are plenty of people to talk to. Wow. <laughs> wow. Probably should have pushed that. It says push to ring. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. Good. Should we try the doorbell, the actual doorbell? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> I just enjoy uh, standing on porches. It is kind of relaxing now. That would be the name of our band. If we were rock stars, standing on porches. That'd be cool. Yeah. Opening for stepping on root beer. Standing on porches, <laughs> opening for stepping on root beer. So this is why knocking has always been flawed. People aren't home or they don't answer. But we'll continue trying to get a story after lunch. So, uh, I'm rethinking my life. I'm giving up on door knocking. Resorting to the sign. On the corner. 
it's what I do. Get your story here. I love your show. Oh, thank you. And just like that, we had a story. I feel like I'm at the top of the mountain now. That was top of mind for Kathleen Barney because as a young women's leader in her congregation, she recently took the girls rappelling for the first time. Her first time. It was, yeah, scary. If you've ever been rappelling, those first steps are terrifying. You're going over the edge backwards. Was it fun? Yeah, a little bit when I got done. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a sense of... Accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, look what I did. That was it, yes. I came home and I told my husband, I did it. I, yeah, I did it. So that was good. I was glad I did it. Kind of a symbol for life, yeah. right? Definitely. Life is like that. Yeah. It's stepping off the edge. Definitely. Not knowing what's on the other side. Definitely. Life gave Kathleen one of those tests five years ago when her son Cody decided to go climb a mountain. I knew something was going to happen. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just didn't feel good about it before it happened or before they left. And so I kept trying to think of everything. I was actually looking online. Is it going to rain? Is there a reason why they can't go? And um, there was nothing. At nearly 12,000 feet, Mount Timpanoga stands majestic above Utah Valley. Reaching the summit is really more of a hike than a climb. But Kathleen couldn't shake that bad feeling. So they went, and when I was at the doctor's office cleaning in the morning, all of a sudden I can remember exactly where I was, and it was like, you got to pray right now. And so I got on my knees, and um, I don't usually start out my prayers with um, songs. Like one of my favorite songs is um, Heavenly Father, Are You Really There? A Child's Prayer, Heavenly Father, Are You Really There? And so I started out with, and I'm like, you gotta watch over those boys right now. And I just prayed. Cody and his friends completed the hike. But later in the day, Kathleen got a phone call. And they couldn't tell me anything. They just said he was being transported by ambulance to American Fork Hospital. And they couldn't tell me any more information. Kathleen says the boy driving fell asleep coming down the windy canyon road. Hit the tree with such force that it took off the axle and it was embedded in the tree and they flipped and rolled. People who saw the accident didn't think anyone could survive. It's because they were all wearing seatbelts, they were okay. Thank heavens, because six days later, Cody was leaving for two years to be a missionary for his church, something he always wanted to do. But he really wasn't all the way okay. And so we sent him to Mexico, and he ended up coming back home in November, right before Thanksgiving, because of the effects of the car accident. Cody had a traumatic brain injury that wasn't discovered until months later. He had headaches. Um, he had sound in his ear. And when he came home, he couldn't like stand on, like he couldn't balance. Uh, there was, it, it affected like depression. It took a long time. He was not the same boy. But after lots of doctor's visits, different therapies and plenty of prayer. Last semester, I think he took 22 credit hours in Hawaii. Wow. And so. Nobody does that in Hawaii. <laughs> I know, I know. There's beach so. time that you need, right? I know, that's true. So, wow. He's a great kid. Could have you imagined when you were in the middle dealing with this that, hey, one day he'll be in Hawaii going to school taking 22 credits? Not at all. I would not have imagined. Does he know how proud you are of him? I hope so. I, I hope so. I don't know if he does or not. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Kathleen says the family was brought closer because of the accident. Her faith was strengthened. And she's blown away at her son's toughness. Life has a way of making you step off the edge 
backwards. To actually see him going through these things, and I couldn't do anything about it, and that was really hard. But I also was grateful that he was a fighter and that he kept fighting. When you go rappelling, you are not alone. You always have somebody usually up above and then down below on belay. They are watching, they're supporting, they're holding that rope, creating tension so that you don't fall. And that's what Kathleen was doing with Cody. She was watching and supporting. She was making sure that he did not fall. Now, I appreciate your support on this channel. Please like, subscribe, and share these videos with others if you find them inspiring to you. Now, if you would like to see the outtakes to this shoot, there's some fun stuff like Kathleen introducing me to her dog named Todd. <laughs> Not kidding, I've never <laughs> heard of a dog named Todd before, but uh, yeah, we met Todd. So just click uh, right up here and you can watch the outtakes. Also, they talked about how, you know, they love the show that I do and she was sure as Cody was rehabilitating as they would watch the show that I would one day come and tell their story. That's in the outtakes too. So take a look. You're tripping with Todd. Thanks for watching. You, you don't have to keep watching. I mean, I'll, I'll keep sitting here for a while, but you can be done.